world will never be the same once you see it through the eyes of Fairway Frank. Frank, we'll sell London broils, New York strip steaks, pork chops, pork steaks. Frank's mama always said, life is like a T-bone steak. When you shop at Fairway, you know exactly what you're going to get. Chris Williams. That's Chris. Chris Hassel. Two guys named Chris. Presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery. From the Channel Seed Studios, this is Iowa Everywhere. Channel Seed. Seedsmanship at work. What up? Happy Friday, and welcome to two guys named Chris here on Iowa Everywhere. It's the 15th. I'm still in Kansas City, Hassel in Florida. Matty Van Winkle, Staddy Van Winkle, he is producing the program. As always, we are brought to you by our friends at Fairway Meat and Grocery here live in the Channel Seed Studios. A little bit of an off-kilter week as far as the, the shows go. We didn't want to do a show on thursday morning and do like an all preview type show and then not be able to react so here we are after iowa's um i doubt their season has come to an end but they won't be in the ncaa tournament iowa state plays baylor tonight which will be uh wild um like a couple of two seeds going at it like that's a high level game we're gonna get tonight at t-mobile in kansas city how are you today hassle what's going on so no, it, no work today no if, no cbs no, it's friday I'm, I'm i'm off oh yeah you never work fridays i forgot if iowa state would have lost last night would you still be in that hotel room right now yeah i would have done the show and then gone my my daughters and wife are here today they're at legoland so we would have stayed today and then gone back to the hell's legoland uh it's a land full of legos is that a that's a Kansas City staple? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're there right now. Well, I'm that's good. Working. So they're not bothering you. You can just kind of do your own thing, huh? Yeah, well, I'm working. I mean, but wait, as long so as the Cyclones are playing, I'm working. That's your wife and your snot-nosed kids are in that room with you while you're trying to sleep for work and get ready and do all your different jobs. Yeah. That's a true family man right there. I wouldn't allow it. I would not allow basically it. Clark Griswold, right? I mean, yeah, but Clark yeah. Griswold wasn't also working when he was on these vacations. Well, I mean, he was on a vacation. He wasn't working. These don't like happen very often. They just they come for a few days because are they going to follow you to the NCAA tournament too? No, no, I'll be there alone. Honey, That's it. You mind taking the kids with you to uh, spoke? <laughs> just watch. Over I did them um, at the NCAA tournament. I did bump into. Dave Zawolinski and his crew last night. They're down here in Kansas City. Did you know that? What? What? What's he doing down there? Uh, watching the games. Who's his crew? His neighborhood uh, bubble in Omaha? Uh, Rusty. Rusty. Rusty Lord was there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, who else? Yep. A couple other guys I I'd, I'd never met, but they were... Uh, his boys were... They had a good night. We'll put it that way. You know, I'm completely sober... I, you know, I'm working, right? Like, and then I bump into those guys after about, I think they started at like 11 o'clock in the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, it's Kansas City at the big And Paul what time of night what was everybody this? Does. Uh, well, it was after I got back from working the Iowa State game. They met me at the hotel, so probably around like 11. Jeez. And Zabolinski one of those guys that will count the amount of drinks that he has just so he can tell everybody. I've had 11 Bud Lights. I've had two old fashions. I've had three glasses of red wine, and now I'm drinking vodka Red Bull. <laughs> and I've peed five was, times. Yeah, no, it was fun. It was good to see him. It was good to see him. No, it's it's good to have my girls here because I don't. You know how March gets when you do this. You're just gone, right? Like a. a and this year, it's like I could be gone for like three, four straight weeks, depending on how Iowa State does. So. It's good to have him here for. I'm gonna go swimming. I'm gonna take uh, 
take Cammy and Elise swimming this afternoon before the big game. We're going to do cannonballs. We're going to teach Elise how to do a cannonball. It's a big day here. It's big warm day. enough to swim there? No, that's an indoor pool. It is nice, though. But... Indoor pool? Ugh. The, the See, we pool, don't do indoor pools in Florida. The pool at the Marriott is on, like, the 20th floor, isn't it? You said it right. He said Marriott. Yeah. The Marriott. Van Winks learns quickly. Floor. It's on the 22nd floor because there's only 22 floors, and it's the top one, but hmm. I digress. Let's uh, let's leave with Iowa State, and then we'll get into the Iowa situation. This, uh, you know, Iowa State really kicks – Kansas State's ass in, in so many ways last night. Iowa State goes one of 14 from three and still wins the game comfortably by 20 plus. So uh, I'm actually really encouraged by, by what we saw with Iowa State. I, I agree with what TJ Otzelberger said after the game where he was less concerned about the, the shots not falling and more concerned about quality shots. And they certainly got more of them. I think they took a step in the right direction. I do not think that the offense is fixed by any means. I wouldn't go as far to say that. But it was a step in the right direction against a top 25 defensive team, uh, that being Kansas State. And then, you know, really the story to me is just this rivalry between Iowa State and Kansas State seems so, like, thick now. And and then Jerome Tang, you know, running his mouth about Tame and Lipsy after the game. Like, this is just so – it's so bizarre, and I also will, will point out to you, Chris, Iowa State fans hate Jerome Tang as much as anybody I can remember in a really long time. I mean, I'm sure there's been other villains out there. They just despise this guy, and it started the second he walked out onto that T-Mobile floor yesterday. They were all over his ass. I mean, he even blinks at a referee. Iowa State fans start booing him. Then he did the whole thing with the mop. He got technical foul. He's talking about Tame and Lipsy, calling him a flopper after the game. Like, I wow. hate this bastard. <laughs> There's so much to chew on here with this Jerome Tame thing. What do you, ben what do you Wink, think? Ben Winks has the audio. Let's hear it. And TP, you know, he's like, he might be the second biggest flopper in our league, right? I, I'm being honest. The, the, the number one flopper plays for Iowa State. He's really good, Tame and Lindsay, right? But this dude is, and I've been on his behind about not being a flopper, right? Like, like be tough. Be, 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 be that guy. Don't, don't have the pouty faces and learn how to love your teammates and lead them and next right play and move on to the next thing. And I've watched that. I've watched the growth. And you see these growth in these young men, not just as basketball players, but as men, Right, and that's that's the thing I'm most proud of. I I told them in the locker room, like, like they may not learn any basketball from us, but they learned about faith, and they learned about being men, and men who are going to be great husbands and great fathers. And and I'm so proud of them, and I, I look forward to the next 40 years together. And but I'm just telling you, I'm really excited about next week because I believe we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. And I taught them uh, the right way to mop a floor. <laughs> okay, they're not going to be in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm glad you clipped off the the larger portion of that soundbite because I had only heard the part where it stops right after he says Tame and Lipsy and he's a really good player because that, that gives me more context. That actually makes it, when, when you listen to the whole thing, it actually makes it look worse to me because he went on yeah. to say he's trying to worse. coach that out of his player. He hates that yeah. his player does that. And so he's that was like, a is Lipsy clear not shot. A- is Lipsy not a man? I'm just going <laughs> off of his. Be a man. We're gonna make you turn you into a man, like. So, well, and then like the weird part is, I think he got Lipsy mixed up with Keyshawn Gilbert. I've heard I that don't. from a lot of fans too. Yeah, I, I, because like, it I Gilbert's mean, more of a flopper. I get the quote unquote <laughs> flopper than than Tame and Lipsy is. I would make the argument that Lipsy's like not a flopper at all. Like he just gets the shit kicked out of him out there a lot. Like it, it was just weird, man. Like I, it was so unnecessary. It was just so unnecessary. Yes. And he was talking about his own player, Tyler Perry, who came over in the transfer portal from North Texas. I remember. Uh, I mean, I called a lot of his games, and he was a he was a great player at North Texas. Hasn't really hit that peak for Kansas State. They are not going to be in the tournament. Van Wicks, do you have the soundbite of TJ? Why don't you play that when TJ was asked if Kansas State is should be in the NCAA tournament? Do you believe that K-State deserves a bid in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I, I don't uh, 
spend a lot of time following all that stuff. And um, I just try to focus on what's in front of us. I, I do think that K-State's a really good basketball team. They're very well coached. Um, certainly the season they had last year going to lead eight, um, you know, they're a good team. And I think they're playing better now uh, maybe than they were, you know, a few weeks back. So uh, I'll leave that, those type of decisions to people that are far more qualified than myself. A lot of people had a problem with that from the Kansas State side of things and maybe even some Big 12 fans that said, you're a Big 12 coach. You need to stump for Big 12 teams to get in there. And we're talking about, you know, giving context of an entire uh, quote. A lot of them just cut it off right after TJ said that first line that I don't, you know, I don't follow that kind of stuff. He went on to compliment Kansas State many times. But I, I do not think that it's the responsibility of a head coach at another institution to to stump for a team that should not be in. Like, there are teams that should be in. Darren DeVries should stump for Indiana State to get in from the Valley. Indiana State is deserving. But, like, if you don't believe it, why say it? Kansas State is not an NCAA tournament team, period. I'm glad TJ didn't just fall for that and say, yes, you know what we need is we want as many teams in the tournament as possible. But we get, cause you have to be real. And like, can we just be real here too, that this is a Kansas state coaching staff that essentially accused them of like spying. Of course. And, yes. <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know what you want them to say. This is where media just gets it so wrong, though. You know, and I get what those guys were doing. They're they're trying to, you know, they they. You, I often think that it's more interesting to hear what the other coach thinks about the game compared to the team that I'm covering because it gives you a different perspective, right? And that's what they mm -hmm. were looking for. What is this guy? He's seen Iowa State, or he's seen Kansas State now two games in a row. What does he think of their chances? Um, but yeah, like, and I can promise you, like, TJ doesn't, he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't think about this stuff. He's not sitting around reading Joe Lenardi and in our in our friend of the program, Jerry Palm. I just like the Tang thing. Like, is so weird to me. He. It feels like every game he's doing something just bizarre, though. Remember he did the thing with the referees when they played at Houston? He did the thing in Ames when it was all about the, you know, he's he done the Bruce Willis thing. Maybe it's great. Maybe, I mean. Wait, what's the Bruce Willis thing? He said something. Matt, look that up. That'll be easy to find. He was talking about how if Bruce Willis, if something about Die Hard, he was basically comparing his team to being Bruce Willis and Die Hard. This was in like January. What? I like it's it's weird because I like these guys because they make it. Yeah, yeah. This is after they lost to Oklahoma State. Listen to this. Um, losing is not fun, right? Anytime you lose, right? It doesn't matter if it was we had won ten in a row and then lost one. It, it doesn't matter. And like this is our movie. Right. We, we choose we can choose to be victims or we can choose to be stars. We're going to choose to be stars in this movie. We're going to be the one to determine how it turns out, not uh, somebody else or or the narrative or the obstacles that are in our way. Right. Die Hard wouldn't be great if Bruce Willis got killed in the first scene. Right. When he oh, why me? No shoes. Right. He gets killed. Movie wouldn't have been a great movie. He chose not to be a victim. We're going to choose not to be a victim. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have a he, problem he, with that. Wait, you don't you have a problem no, with that? He, yes, I do, because he said that it, that was like a week after. Okay, the, the direct quote is, we're not going to choose to be a victim, where he went out after the Houston game and basically said that the refs were trying to screw him. And gotcha. then he also okay. was accusing Iowa State of yes. filming their huddles or whatever. Dude, you've literally spent the last two weeks okay. claiming to be a victim. That was my problem. Good point. So so there's hypocrisy there. Yeah. Which whatever. Your own I actually... Just as a media guy, he's entertaining. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, he, he entertains us. But like, I was glad they won that game so that I could see this Iowa State versus Kansas State game and, and hear the vitriol in the stands. I mean, the fan bases oh. don't like each other. This, this is great. With the new Big 12, th this is a rivalry that is going to continue. And people are going to look forward to these games, home and away, moving forward, as long as Jerome Tang is there. But... Getting back to the actual win in Iowa State, 
uh, very encouraged, but not not a hundred percent satisfied with where they are agree. offensively. Yeah. Like I said, I, I do not believe Kansas State is a tournament team. So yeah, it's a decent win, but like go out and beat Baylor. You're you're not going to beat Baylor by hitting one three. You're not going to advance in the NCAA tournament to an elite eight by shooting like that from outside. They still have to get better in so many aspects offensively. But it's a good start. I, I'm, I'm really glad that they didn't go up there and lay an egg and then have to limp into the NCAA tournament with back-to-back losses to Kansas State. I was talking to somebody in the program on what would have been on Wednesday, and I kind of asked, because I got this vibe, Ots and, and the players that I talked to on Wednesday – both made comments about how they thought that game at Houston really took a lot out of the team and that it just, it literally took them like a couple of weeks to recover from not only that, but the whole big 12 grind, right? Like everybody gets tired that time of year, but mm-hmm. then you go to Houston and that, and that they lost that game, but like they left it all out there. I think everybody was really happy with how Iowa state performed in it. And I was, I couldn't help but think too. It's like, man, do you really want to do that again on a good point on Saturday That is a good point and then if you're in Omaha you're going to turn around and play again on Thursday in the NCAA tournament the the program really they're going now you're all in on this thing because you're playing Baylor and you could be playing for technically a two seed you know like they're right at the same line Mm -hmm. that I I think if you beat Baylor you wrap up a two seed no doubt no doubt about that Sure, you can win another Big Ten tournament championship by beating likely Houston, but that's not going to help you on the seed line at all. No, you just get to cut down the net and you get a banner for it, right? Like that's mm-hmm. and you get a so ring in, and... in in a lot of ways, I guess you could say tonight's game is more important than a potential championship game tomorrow. I think that's very like when you. It's come definitely to, more like, important for the tournament. Long term, absolutely. Tonight's game means more you because you're not like you said you're not going to go from a two to a one right this isn't Mm -hmm. a one seed beating houston's not going to do that um and houston's locked in and they're not coming down to a two no the only thing i i actually think that favorably it might in a weird way iowa state may have an advantage obviously because of the crowd if they were to play houston but houston's really banged up too so for them to play three games in a row didn't seem be, to affect them in that first game. My God, I looked up and it was like forty-two so to nineteen. They're so good. Like they, I think they're the best team in the country. I, I just do. I think they're the best team in the country. It, it but these this deal is just weird because like when you're, when you're a middle of the pack team, like we've seen Iowa State do a lot in this tournament, and you come down here and win it, it's such a big deal. When you're one of the top two. Like, you're thinking about other things. It's just this bizarre. And then you've got, dude, the crowd yesterday. And I wonder if it, being in the top 10 helps, obviously. I wonder if the Big 12 tournament being moved back a week with spring break matters. I've never seen more Iowa State fans here on a Thursday. It's It was crazy. Did you see the videos from the Power and Light District yesterday of that mm-hmm. crowd? Like, and then all the other big fan bases are gone. Like Iowa State fans are just going to fill this place up for the next two days, assuming they could potentially get past Baylor tonight, which, which they're a one point favorite in. Who's a one point favorite? Iowa State. I, Iowa State's favored by okay. one. Yeah. So virtual toss up. Houston plays a Texas Tech team that handled BYU. That was surprising to me. I thought BYU would win that game. Could just couldn't hit a three. Could not no. hit a shot until it was too late. Um. Late game tonight, huh? I thought they'd play a little bit earlier. Yesterday's game was what six? Tonight's game is thirty tonight. Yeah, eight thirty central. My God. Yeah. Um, Jeez, but these these Iowa State fans. That's the one team Iowa State hasn't beaten in the Big Twelve this season, correct? Baylor. That is correct. Yeah. Good pull on that. Good pull. And going on back that, to so. that game, that was a, an incredible game. I'm looking forward to it. I think tonight will be really. I I think Iowa State will win tonight. I think that so last night was a good step in the right direction for them. Uh, they 
the ball just moved better. They have to make shots at some point. You're not going to keep going one of 14. <laughs> you know, the fact, again, the fact that, dude, they, they had 44 points in the paint last night compared to, like, 20 by by that um, Kansas State team. So, I don't know. It just, this team feels like it's, the again, my worry is more long-term, man. If this, if you go three games, last night was physical, tonight's going to be physical, and then we all know what mm-hmm. a game against Houston would be. That genuinely gives me the heebie-jeebies going into next week. And maybe it's my defense mechanism popping up, but it really does. Like the, When those guys all started talking on Wednesday about how much that Houston game took out of them and it took them a while to recover, it's just like, God, what do you do? You can't come here and try and lose unless maybe, you're Bill Self. Maybe Omaha Blue getting some playing time is is going to help. Get a fresh body out there. I, I love to What'd see you think? that from, you think from of TJ that? because I this time of year, look, you've got a five-star sitting on your bench who hasn't played because of how he's performed in practice. He just hasn't been ready. He hasn't been um, – they, they, TJ didn't think he could really help the team in, in many instances. But this time of year, I mean, everybody's worn down, beat up. Throw him out there, see what he can do. I mean, worst-case scenario, he goes out, doesn't play very well in a – Big 12 tournament game, and he doesn't play in the NCAA tournament. Best case, this is a super talented five-star who all of a sudden makes you deeper. Do you think that we'll see more of him tonight like we did last night? Yes, because of the Demarion Watson injury. Um, So Demarion's got a concussion, and that really opened up the opportunity to bring Omaha in. Um and yeah, I do. I think that he's the rotation guy at least through this weekend, and depending on what he can do um, this weekend. And like, listen, he he came in last night, gets a standing ovation from the crowd. It was a cool moment, and he gave up a wide open layup within five seconds. Mm-hmm. Totally lost. Um, but then you know, after that though, he the. the second part was funny he was so excited when he checked into the game the second time he didn't check into the game Ots Hmm. had to grab him and tell him to go to the scorers table because Omaha was so excited to be in the rotation um but he really did he played good minutes he gave him energy he's got a body right and like if he can do that like there's absolutely a need for that in the in the round of 64 because you've got that quick turnaround Right, like there's a need for mm-hmm. minutes like that, and if he can do that, he doesn't need to be shooting threes, you know. It, God, and I was thinking to myself too, because you know, the fans have been so obsessed with why isn't Omaha playing, and and I understand he's a McDonald's All American. Could you imagine if <laughs> Omaha would have hit that wide open three? <laughs> the the amount of why the hell hasn't he been playing all year? Comments that would have been would have been coming our way. But yeah, I think he's I think he's a rotation guy. For what it's worth, I saw the Miriam Watson last night and it didn't look like a guy who is probably going to be playing in the next couple days. So, yeah, if you want to see more Omaha Blue, I think you're going to see it and I I would even like to see him go a little bit deeper like even like Pavletsky and stuff cuz it's just again, I'm more concerned about their legs for next week. I hope they win this weekend. It's fun for everybody. You enjoy it. Kansas City's special this time of year, but you're going to be in Omaha next week, and you're going to have tens of thousands of Iowa State fans there, and you don't want to lay an egg. You got to get to a sweet six, like it's sweet sixteen or bust right now. I think for this team, when you go in as a two or a three seed, you got to be thinking that. So that's that's really where my mind is. Is there any path to missing out on Omaha? I'm not talking. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about Omaha Baloo. I'm talking yeah. about Omaha, the city. I, I don't think so now. I think because Kansas has dropped Kansas off is so much. Kansas is probably going to be a four or five seed. Yeah, I think Iowa State and Baylor will both be in Omaha. And do you think Watson will be back for the first and second round of the tournament? I mean, they're saying day-to-day concussion protocol and he's doing all that. I would guess. If I had to, I mean, it, there's a lot of smarter people than me doing. I, I would guess, though. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. think that he'll be there, but I don't well, think not- that. I, I I just don't know why you would play him this weekend instead of just getting him ready for next. 
Palm has Iowa State as a three right now in Omaha, and Lenardi has him as a two in Omaha. So I think Palm, I, I want to say in his latest update, and I don't know if it's hit the hit the uh, website yet, but I, I want to say he emailed that he moved Iowa State up to the two line as well. Okay. I know that some other bracketologists have. Uh, he moved Duke down to a four, Kentucky up to a three. I, he he hasn't been as high on Iowa State as as some others have been, but I think you win tonight. I don't see how you can keep Iowa State off the line. I really don't. You see who the second round matchup would be? God, Drake. It, well, <laughs> could be. Yeah, Drake could be. Drake could against be. San Diego State. Yeah, yeah. Man, if I'm Iowa State, I don't want any part of Drake. No, God, no, no. Um, all right. So that's come up tonight around eight thirty. Uh, I want to thank our friends at Channel Seed and Fairway for giving you uh, two guys named Chris twice a week here on Iowa Everywhere. Also, if you're betting on all the big games this weekend, remember our friends at DRF Sportsbook. They are the – Iowa is the only state where the DRF Sportsbook is operating. They're truly a, a local sports book for us, and they've been an awesome partner for us. They're the only place I bet now. Uh, DRF Sportsbook. Download their app today. When you when you do that, it it really shows that uh, it, it helps them want to support Iowa everywhere more. And we're uh, obviously a small local company, so we appreciate all of you guys supporting our advertisers. Iowa has an early exit in the Big Ten tournament. I did get to watch this game this morning. Finally, I had it on. But by the way, real quick before we get to this, the the big here's the problem. So our seats in Kansas city or like, we're literally on like the roof at the, uh, at the team. I was going to ask you about that because I saw Jeff Goodman tweet out a picture of where he was sitting and it looks like you are up on the roof. I mean, it is, I, yeah, I remember co- when, the last time I covered the big 12 tournament was, you know, it was over 10 years ago, but we had our seats, local media seats were on the floor. I mean, you are right. You were right on the same row as the broadcasters on, on TV and right behind them. Well, I have a lot of thoughts on this, and we don't have time today. Uh, I do think that your mark and the Big 12 are teetering on the line of being, like, they know they're behind the others, so they're trying to do anything they can to create revenue. And there's going to be a point where it becomes too much. And I don't know if they've reached it yet. If it's these games in Mexico, if it's stuff like this, um, the, here's the problem though. So we're all the way up there and it's like, whatever. If, as long as I can watch the game on my laptop, that's generally all I care about. Cause I'm there for the locker room access afterward, right? Like it, it really doesn't matter. The internet doesn't work because we're too high up. We're too what? far away. Yeah. The internet's just dead. I'm having to use a hotspot, and my hotspot's not working because there's 15,000 people in there all on their cell phones. I couldn't even I couldn't even watch the Iowa game, or right? I couldn't stream the Iowa State game from my computer. So I'm Ooh. literally like trying to cover this thing from, you know, they look like ants. It's just <sighs> there's a point where it's like, man, I get it. You all have you're trying to squeeze as much revenue out of this as possible this is a really hard i get it but then your marks on there on on wednesday or tuesday is press conference talking about expanding the ncaa tournament and getting more access for big 12 teams i'm telling you man they're they're gonna tiptoe towards to being too greedy in this conference it, the big 12 needs to try and be the best of the rest and not mm-hmm. try and compare itself to the big 10 and the sec and i i don't like the way it's trending well, I even noticed if you were watching on TV last night, the the halftime crew and the between games crew, my buddy Kevin Connors um, hosts that with uh, a couple of the analysts, Sean Farnham and, and others. In every year prior, they were on the floor. They would have a setup on the court between games and at halftime. Now, mm-hmm. now they're not up where you were, but they're they're halfway up. Like way off the floor, so even even that has been changed by your mark. That that ESPN, who has it, who has all the coverage, is not allowed on the floor. So now you know, post game, you can't just grab Tame and Lipsy 
and have him sit down with you or stand with you, you, what the hell happened? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We lost your picture. You turned off your camera. There you go. I, I, there we I go. Didn't even, There's what, Cecil. What in the hell is going on? I, I must have lizards in the pipes again. Is my, uh, <laughs> I think my uh, my good camera died or something. You would, you those, would laugh, those though. Those iguanas are chewing up your internet. Hassel, you would laugh. Um, so they have these like uh, big screen TVs up there for the media to be able to see the game, right? Mm -hmm. And it's playing the TV. It's it's like the old MC twenty two standard definition. <laughs> like it's so blurry, like you can barely even like you even see it. It's just a uh, it's wild. But we uh, we we can move on to Iowa at this <sighs> point. I just I don't like the way the, the the greed thing, man. Like listening to his comments on the NCAA tournament Tuesday it was a real turnoff for me. And I get it. This guy is this guy does not give a shit about the Missouri Valley or really the tournament in general. He's there to get his teams in and to collect checks. I understand that. That's his job. But I mean, it, it was just so blatantly obvious that that is like. We don't have anybody. Mike Shashevsky made some comments yesterday about this, and I thought they were really good. But like, there's like, there's hardly anybody just looking out for the good of college athletics now. It is all right. greed. It is all selfishness. And I don't like say I don't like the way it's trending here. But we'll see. Iowa's early exit. What do you think from that one? Huh. Kind of the same old, same old, right? Um, it was almost the exact same game as the Illinois game. Iowa has the two biggest games of the season in the last two games, and they led for zero seconds. They got blitzed early by Illinois at home, got blitzed early by Ohio State on a neutral floor in a game that they had to win. Just didn't, never really got into it. Sure, they, they fought and got it within three or so again, but... I never felt like they were going to be able to get over the hump and stay over the hump and win that game. And they were going to have to do more damage as well. They were going to have to beat Illinois tonight, which it is, seems impossible. But it, it's another bad end. I mean, it was kind of the same thing last year. You lose at home on senior day, and then you go one and done at the Big Ten tournament, and then you go one and done in the NCAA tournament. Um. You know, big picture, all in all, looking back to where I thought this team would be, this is exactly what I saw coming. I, I thought this would be a team that would be a bubble team, would threaten but not get there. That's exactly what happened. But I didn't expect the apathy to hit this level this quickly. And going into this offseason, it's going to be really tough to, to sell tickets, to get people interested in the team next season. I know they might have a couple of good guys coming in, and if they bring everybody back, there's some good pieces, yeah. right? But where's the excitement? You know, Where's the passion? There, there is none right now. I put out a Twitter poll last night, and look, it's, it's going to be skewed anti-Fran in the heat of a loss like that, right when everything's done, but... Yeah. I, yeah. I asked Hawkeye fans, are you ready to move on from Fran? And the, the, the answers you could give were yes, no, I'm a Cyclone fan, or I'm a fan of another team. Trying to get the Cyclone fans out of there, trying to get the, you know, if you don't have a rooting interest, get them out of there. 50% say yes, move on from Fran. 21% say no, which might be some Cyclone fans. Cyclone fans made up 25% and fan of another team, 3%. So um, more than twice as many at, for any other option was, was yes, move on from Fran. I mean, the, the one thing you can look to for kind of an honest opinion of where things are, is look to your rivals. And if your rivals want yeah. Yeah. a coach to stay or a player to stay, that's not good. That's Iowa State fans want Fran McCaffrey to stay as long as possible. That's not good. And there's a lot of Iowa fans now that they're just not necessarily like hate the job that he's done, 
but are just they're fatigued. They're re they're ready for something different. It's been 15 years now. He's going to go into his 15th season, and still, really, they haven't even been close to a Sweet 16. That one year they they were down big to Tennessee, came back, made it close at the end. That's as close as they've gotten. I mean, even when they had a a, a really good team with Luca Garza, they didn't come close. They got their ass kicked by Oregon. Got absolutely blown out. And in all the other games, the one against Villanova, totally blown out. And it it's not all about, it's not like black and white. Sweet 16, great, you're awesome. Not Sweet 16, you suck, you need to get out. There's, there's a lot of gray area in there. And in that gray area, Fran just hasn't earned a lot of checks, a lot of pluses on his side. He's not very likable. He doesn't really engage with the fan base. He hasn't embraced this new era where you need to look more in the transfer portal. You need to drum up support financially for your team. That's your job. Mm -hmm. that, that's not like I've seen some articles and some takes from pro Fran people that that the fans need to step up here and help him out. Like that's not he needs to drum up the support. He needs to get excitement going. He's the one responsible for getting money in there to be able to get better players or keep better players. It's, I was thinking about this earlier. I read a Rob House piece for Hawkeye Nation, and it was a lot about the lack of financial support for basketball and all this stuff. And, you know, that was kind of what led me was going to be my kitchen refresh on Iowa today. Um, because I'm sure a lot of what Rob wrote is true. Like Rob, I I'm, I'm positive. It is what's interesting to me here is that we live in this state where wrestling coaches are raising hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year on their own without like real collective arms. Mm -hmm. Now I know they have their, but it's not, it's not tied to the big one. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and that's their, like, if they don't do it, they're going to suck. And your job is to win. Like that's right. Like that's your job is to find a way to win the games. And yes. that's the thing with me and Fran, like where do I think he's a good basketball coach? Yeah, I do. Like I, I mean, he's, he's done a fine job. He, I think he. I think he's a good coach too, but yeah. I. I also think he has some real blind spots. There's so much more involved in two. Th correct. There's so much more involved in 2024 than just being a coach like mm -hmm. he was 20 years ago, and you've got to have more of like that CEO type now. And he, it. Listen, uh, Dix had a really good end of the year. We'll see what. Do we think Perkins will come back? I don't really know. It certainly doesn't feel like. I, it, I don't know I, at this point. Like I'm not even 100 no percent sure Fran comes back. And I, he's I think not, he's not getting fired. He's he not getting fired. Leave. No, no, he is not getting fired. I'm just saying I'm not 100 percent sure he comes back. My whole thing. I, I said this to you like two, three weeks ago. It's like even if they would get in the tournament, I just don't know how this off season based on his track record, changes anything. What are you going to do? Go get a, you know, we said this when Cricky committed last year. That's a really nice player. He'll fit in well there. He'll have a nice year for Iowa. That's not a game changer. Like, that's mm -hmm. not a dude that you're just going to throw up, you know. And I, I'm, I'm just looking at it, like, what they have. We all know Owen Freeman's going to be really good. Hopefully you can keep him. You know, hopefully all those things are are the same. But, like, what is going to make fans care and to be really excited? Because if not, you're look, you're going into it again like, well, hope we can be on the bubble, and then we, you know, we get some good matchups and make a run. And if that's like, the case, it's going to be quite a bit uglier next season than it was even this season. I mean, Patrick McCaffrey talking about how bad the crowds were this season. What's it going to look? like next year if if it's the same old same old if i'm beth gets 
I really, really go hard after Darren DeVries right now. Right now. See where he's at. If he says no, hopefully that doesn't get out. And then you have to immediately hit the ground running and make some changes to try to drum up some positive movement in this program. You have to, you're going to have to do things that you never thought of, like slashing season ticket prices in half, coming up with creative packages to get fans in there for an 8 p.m. tip on a Wednesday night, letting students in free and giving them something when they're there. Like free tickets to session stands for a drink and an ice cream cone or a drink and a hot dog or a drink and a pizza. Like some of the stuff that they had to do during the lick lighter days when they would give people, the students, pizza to get them in. That's what's going to have to be done or else it's going to be really embarrassing in that building next year if they don't jump out to a, a good start. I'm talking like really good. Like, be a top 25 team. Because the fan base, it, I, I, this fan base is not going to be excited about a team that next year finishes fourth in the Big Ten and receiving votes in the AP poll and a, a nine seed in the tournament. That's not going to excite them at this point under this regime. It's just not. I want to do a little bit more digging too on this, like the money thing. Like, I just, I don't understand how Iowa basketball doesn't have any money. Like well, people tell me, I don't understand that. I think you have to put yourself, there's a couple ways to look at it. You have to put yourself in the position of the fans. There's only a very small percentage of fans that are really invested in the men's basketball program that are really behind Fran McCaffrey. They can only do so much. Okay. Yeah. And that's your, like lower level. If you're just a regular fan, I mean, you saw the results from yeah. the poll. There's uh, twice as many, almost three times as many Iowa fans want to move on from Fran than, than want him to stay. What are you doing? What you get? You're going to give money to the men's basketball program when you could be giving to the football program, the women's basketball program that is thriving right now. Are you going to spend your time and resources going to a men's game or Do a women's game? But the one know, thing that, that stands out to me. I'm sorry. Does the, Real quick. Does the women's program get supported by Swarm? Well, I Two? know Caitlin Clark doesn't. I okay. don't know okay. if Swarm or how much money Swarm puts into the women's program. Caitlin Clark's okay. not taking anything from, from Swarm. The thing that, that I look back at when you have these people complaining about fans not giving money and the athletic department needing to give more financially to this program. Remember the article that came out, I think it was the Des Moines Register a year or two ago that laid out the amount of money that was spent in a given year on recruiting for each program at Iowa. Yeah, I do remember football that. to yeah. men's basketball, the wrestling. And it was stunning. Men's basketball spent more money in recruiting than the football team did, than any other program at that school did. So I, I don't think it's that they're not getting the, the money and, and resources and the push from the athletic department. Yeah, it's, it just is weird. And you can bitch all you want about Carver Hawkeye Arena and how things need to change and you got to move the students closer. One, the students aren't coming. Like You really want to give the students all these seats and then they don't show up? Because mm -hmm. why are they going to show up? Unless you let them in free or attempt them to get there and give them free stuff while they're there. consistently shown up in a really long time, too. This is not like a new thing. And look at Carver Hawkeye Arena and listen to Carver Hawkeye Arena when the women are playing. I get that this is a once-in-a-lifetime type thing. This is a once-in-a-generation player in Caitlin Clark. But that building and that atmosphere is great. It's one of the, it's top 10 in the nation for a, for a basketball atmosphere. Not just women, basketball atmosphere. It's just like it was in the 80s and 90s when the men's team was playing at Carver. So don't tell me it can't happen. 
It can. But fans need to be excited about something. There needs to be a reason for them to invest in the program. And that is on Fran McCaffrey for drumming that up. He needs to give fans a reason to do it, a reason to believe, and a reason to donate, a reason to show up. And he, it's not happening now. He's been there 15 years. Is it possible that he shakes up the coaching staff at all? I wouldn't think so. Me neither. I'm just I'm trying to think of things he could do. Things Fran could do? Yeah, like just like it, in year 15, like Here's what Here's one you thing do? that I think will help next season. There won't be a McCaffrey on the team. It's taking minutes Patrick from someone else that year. deserves it. Oh god, that can't he can't he can't come back. He can't. I hope he does. Like, this this is nothing against him as a person, but he digressed, he regressed yes. in his time at Iowa. I mean, his first full year, he was averaging double digits. He, he, was, he, he was a really good player. I know he's been through some things mentally, emotionally, but Physically. that doesn't mean you still have to play him 20-plus minutes a game. That doesn't mean you should be, you know, they've had first-round picks that have seen their minutes taken away from them throughout their years at Iowa because a McCaffrey was on the team. I, I do think that that will help a little bit. Yeah, I don't have a great answer. Uh, you're stuck in a really bad contract with him. He doesn't seem like the type to me that's ready to walk away and retire anytime soon. And... Um, I think that you're his son looking. Jack saying he's not going to play at Iowa that made me start thinking of Fran's tenure differently, and making me think that this this might be ending sooner than than you would think. We'll see. It doesn't feel like that to me, but you you very well could be right. Um, let's do our cheers to the freaking weekend, shall we? With our friends from Steeple Ridge Bourbon, I'll be down here in Kansas City. Steeple Ridge Bourbon. I'm. I got no. Uh, I got no plans other than Big Twelve basketball and some cannonballs in the Marriott pool. Marriott here during my off time. What are you doing all weekend? What do you got going on? Well, let's see. Uh, tonight we're going to go to an early dinner at my favorite restaurant called uh, Sweetwater. Uh, and then going to come back, watch hoops again. Uh, the Iowa State game, obviously. I mean, I just sat on my ass and watched every game yesterday. Saturday, uh, I'm going to be, oh, we're going out of the town with uh, mm. Matt and Ashley Barry in uh, Palm Beach. So look out. Robert Kraft, if you're up there, look out. We're coming for you. My mom and dad are in Miami. No shit. What are they doing? Went to see my Aunt Debbie. She's... Debbie used to be in Dallas, and now she's in Miami. <laughs> okay. Does she is she no. a big fan of the Cox as well? Yeah, huge cock. Big yeah. cock fan. Okay. Nice. Yep, well, it's beautiful weather down here. I was out at the pool yesterday. Dipped my toes in the pool for the first yeah, time they, this season. They just sent me a. <laughs> they just sent me a picture of them on Miami Beach. Did you go? Did you swim with the iguanas? I, since uh, since they uh, they redid the gutters on Tuesday, I, I haven't heard any iguanas. I, I was just in, me and Elise, my four-year-old, for people that don't know, we were just in the, I went down to get a coffee before the show. And this guy, never met him before in my life. Most of these Iowa State fans I've at least seen. It's yeah. some, you know, like I, it, I've been around for so damn long. It's the same people who got all these things. Oh like, yeah, I, I went into your to your RV thing, and <laughs> you, you're like, oh yeah, that's that's crazy, Dave. You know, he's you know, he, uh, a couple days ago he shit in a garbage can over there, got arrested. He's back though. Um, this guy I I'd never met him before, and he just starts laughing in the elevator. I'm like, somebody fart, like you know, and he goes, man. We were listening to that podcast that podcast you did about the iguanas <laughs> on the way down. I'm like, you know, well, we, we talked about other things. It wasn't a podcast about iguanas. The <laughs> the iguanas just happened to be a you know, focal point of that 
particular podcast. Oh yeah, I met a it's I just, met a lot of our great listeners down in Kansas City, and I think every one of them brought up the iguanas. Every one of these people says the same I, thing. God, about I hassle. really, I really screwed up. I, I should have, I should have had my wife take some video of it because it, it, it would have been you. It would have gone next level had you had you actually seen what I had to do. If you could have seen the maggots consuming this thing, that's disgusting. If you could somehow smell the maggots smell the of worst. death that I had to deal with. Ugh. Hopefully never again. Because I just spent twenty five hundred dollars on the gutters. The maggots are the worst. That's the one thing that I can't really. I mean, uh, if I need to go out and kill a snake with a shovel, oh, I'll do it. That reminds me. If I me, need to, if I need to go and shoot, you know. Here's a disgusting story for you. Um, I came across the story uh, a day or two ago online. I sent it to Andy Fails for the more segment. So if you listen to Murph and Andy and you heard Thursday's more segment, he talked about this, but he didn't include the most important part. So here's what happened. This guy in Florida was getting headaches, really bad headaches, like migraine type headaches. Just he, he it was so bad that he had, he went to the hospital, so they start doing these scans. They see these cysts in his in his brain. Okay, they're thinking it's some kind of uh, you know maybe tumors are growing all over the place. So they they check him in, send him to a you know a real specialist who does some more scans, and they see that it's some kind of uh, tapeworm larvae sacs in his brain. Okay. And what what is this that you're showing, Van Wink? This is from the article I was reading. It's like a diagram. You, you of You like, read this article? I just googled it. I'm just okay. Live right. listening to your so, story here. Okay, so you're just adding pictures to it. All right. Well, so the guy says, "Well, I do eat undercooked bacon, and I have for my entire life." Hmm. And they're like, "Oh my god, I think we know what's going on." So in undercooked bacon, there can be these little larvae uh, things that aren't destroyed uh, because you didn't cook it long enough. And you eat it, okay? That's not a huge problem because it's just going to go down, it's going to stay in your gut, and then you're going to shit it out, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem occurs when you eat undercooked bacon, you consume these eggs, you shit it out. You somehow oh. get that shit that on has little eggs in it on your hands. The, the shit particles. And then you eat it. So the guy was so unhygienic, didn't wash his hands, somehow consumed <laughs> these shit eggs, and they went up into his brain and infected his brain. Fails left out the entire, the biggest part of the story. It's not from eating the uncooked bacon. No, it's from the shit. It's from eating particles. the uncooked bacon and then shitting. Somehow eating your own shit that has these larvae eggs in it. Zach wants to know why you wouldn't just shit it out again. Well, uh, uh, apparently it goes through some kind of transformation once it gets inside your body yeah. into your shit Different and then you eat it. It's different. Did I ever tell you about that episode of River Monsters that I was watching? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Tell the story. This, Start telling this, the story. And... This guy's in the Amazon. Uh, I, wait. Oh, are you, is this the guy that pissed and the thing yeah. jumped up his, his pee hole? In the, the, the microbe or whatever swam up his piss stream yes. into his penis. Oh. And it paralyzed his penis. Oh, my God. He had to have his... He had to be completely emasculated. He had to have a dickectomy. Yeah, dick a dick swapped to me. Wait, he got another guy's dick. I think he had a. That was a sequel. I didn't watch the sequel, but I think he had a. It's called fake Dick penis. Two. Dick, the movie, was where he 
had the thing swim up, paralyzed his cock, and cut it off. Dick 2 was when he got his dick replaced. So this is a movie. It's River Monsters. Oh, it's a show. <laughs> so moral of the story here is you can eat don't undercooked piss in bacon. The Amazon. You can eat undercooked bacon. Just don't eat the shit that comes out. And wash your goddamn hands. Yeah, what the hell? Can you imagine a guy, a guy that eats undercooked bacon and is that disgusting? What it would take, the pain that it would take for a guy living like that to go to the doctor? Because people like that don't go to the doctor. They don't go to the dentist. They don't do any of that. Imagine the pain he was dealing with from these shit larvae cyst sacs in his head. Can I tell one more story? Do, we, do you have time? Yeah. It's, it's not medical. Um, so we're, we just get done with parent teacher conferences. It's like two weeks ago. And we tell Cammie, Hey, if you get a good report, which I knew she would, cause she's like the best kid ever. And now my four year old's a total shithead and she's going to get in trouble all the time. Like it's going to be a whole thing. Um, we'll take you out to dinner. Like as a reward. Because Cammy, my oldest, loves Chinese food. Stir fry, anything of, if I take her to Asia, like she, she would eat Thai food. She would eat, she loves it all. She loves this Chinese restaurant in Bondurant that we go to. And so we take her there. And Cammy has gotten really into music and she loves Taylor Swift. So she's listening to all these pop stuff pop artists and stuff all the time and she thinks taylor swift's like the greatest mm -hmm. and she says to me because she's a she's an intellect and she goes dad do you think taylor swift or michael jackson is the better pop artist of all time oh and i'm like wow that's a really insightful question mm -hmm. and we start to talk about it and i'm like you know i think taylor swift's definitely going to be ahead of him if she's not already whatever and she says to me astutely, she goes, yeah, Michael Jackson just got so weird, you know? <laughs> Taylor Swift is at least like, and I was like, yeah, you're right. And we start debating, like, why Michael Jackson got weird, and I say, well, he was a child star. And a lot of times those kids turn out weird because they can't handle everything coming at them, right, when they're, when they're young. And Michael Jackson's dad, it was very... Um, abusive from what we understand and right they had a long childhood bad childhood in that sense and cammy's like yeah yeah you know oh, good points dad good conversation and my wife goes michael jackson was a child star oh yes you yes you told me about this in a group text last week she didn't so I, know Michael Jackson was in the Jackson 5. I said, I go, Ashley, he's the lead singer of the Jackson 5. She had no idea that Michael Jackson was the lead singer of the Jackson 5. She thought they were totally different. I'm like, yeah, well, that's Janet. You know? Unbelievable. That's, that's, that's all of them. They're, that's them. Like, and then he, he turned into this. Okay, I had forgotten about that text you sent me. So I thought this conversation was going to go like this. You're talking to your, your little daughter about Michael Jackson being weird. And you said something about him being a child star. And then she goes, I thought he was a child molester. <laughs> well, Cammy, he may have been that too. Uh, I wait, thought it was wild. Wait, wait, hang on. Van Winks is saying Janet Jackson wasn't in the Jackson 5? What? In the comments? I don't think there were any women in the Jackson 5. It was all It the, was the, all boys. All the all, it was yeah. just it was just the boys. ABC. Wow. So we're making fun of your wife for not knowing Michael Jackson was in the Jackson 5. Well, we thought Janet Jackson was a part of it. I I had to explain as is live hard one is saying and, and like, you know, I don't know how to talk about stuff all the time and you know, Cammy's there, and I'm like, I'm having to explain like, to my wife, like, yes, his, you know, the his skin color changed. 
right? Yeah, how do like, you do, how do you explain that really? How do I tell a nine year old about? Like, I don't know what to say. Like, well, I don't really get it. Pigment changes. Sometimes people have. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I, they know, have the disease. Medical issues. You know? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like the the shit eggs in your brain. There's medical reasons for a lot of things. You know what? Van Winks went through a lot of work ahead of this show, putting together a montage of some of the great March moments in oh. the NCAA tournament for our big four teams. I'd love to see this. And, and I helped him out because I had to go deep, deep into the CBS archives to find really the last great tournament moment for Iowa in this thing, too. Because it's been 25 years. I thought I'd put a smile on the Iowa and the Northern Iowa fans' faces because they won't they won't be participating in March. So, well, Let's maybe in some it. extent. Let's see what you put together, Matt. Let's do Let's it. Let's see it. All right. Walker, this could tie it up. Short. Path to be made in the NCAA tournament this year. I can't wait to see it because this is a beauty right here. The wraparound behind the black back pass. What court awareness by Oliver to trigger that? They got the ball in half court rather than down here at three quarter court. Tompkins will inbound. Hornacek is lined up way deep on the baseline. They're looking to get it to him and do. He'll get the shot. It's a good one. Goosebumps right now. Oh, good. Um, that that was great. I I was at a lot of those games. Yeah. And watching just about every one of them that occurred from 1991 on, a couple of things stand out. And apologies to the the podcast only listeners. You you, you might not have been able to 100 percent tell what was going on. But we'll share this on Twitter for everyone too. We'll share this as right. a standalone. Uh, a couple of things that stood out. The the yes of food dunk, such an incredible moment for Drake in a tournament victory in the first four. No fans were there. Like that was in an empty arena, basically, uh, during COVID. And then yes of food transfers out right after that. So I, we're all thinking, oh, you got to put like a huge picture or mural up of that dunk. It's one of the best moments in Drake history. And then he transfers and you, you can't do that. Um, the other one was the Royce White dunk to start that game against UConn. I was at that game sitting courtside and my God, was he good. 
mm. and so physical. Not just in that game, but then the following game against Kentucky, where you know they lost the game, but Royce White at one point shouted out after yeah. a dunk like that, I'm the best fucking player on this court. And Anthony Davis was yeah. on that court, along with some other lottery picks from Kentucky. God, he was so good. Uh. And then the fact that we had to go back 25 years and two days, 25 years and two days ago, was when Iowa won their last game under Dr. Tom Davis, made it to their last Sweet 16, and that's the play that has stuck with me in my mind. It's actually the replay of the play. Dean Oliver, behind so the good. back, no look, double bounce to Jess Settles, who dunked it to give Iowa a five-point lead late in the game against Arkansas. Then they went on and pushed UConn, another team like that Kentucky team for Iowa State. UConn went on to win the national championship. It's just so many great moments. Awesome stuff. All right, I got to go. Um, appreciate you guys. This was fun. Maddie, great job with that. Did awesome. I got my good camera back working again. I don't know what the yeah, hell. It looks it just good. turned off on its own. So we'll be back Monday morning like normal. Where are you going? What are you doing? What's, what are you rushing out of here for? What's We're up? We're done. Hour and six minutes. Well, you said you got something to do. What's going on? I got to do a radio hit. With? Kenny Miller. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They already called right. me, and I had to. Oh, yeah, shit. I'm late. It's all good. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy okay. the games. Okay.